All right, so I've been showing you how to use the pen tool very professionally, very cleanly to control your shapes, right? And then, of course, once you've made the shape like we have here, we can modify them by using the small selection tool and the cornering tools and all of these different options, right, to get exactly what we want. But if you really need to just get something down, instead of fussing with individual anchors, I use the small selection tool, the, the white pointer, and then I use the pencil tool, which is under the brush, and I double click it to make sure it's smoother than it is accurate, so it doesn't make a ton of extra anchor points. And then it's like magic scissors. So I draw through an anchor point, and end through an anchor point, and it will redraw my shapes. It plots a little bit more anchors than the pin tool would, but I have a lot more control that way. The key is, though, you have to be able to see the anchor points in order to modify them. So you have to first select it with the small selection tool. And you can use the smooth tool as well, right, to average things out. Because often I, I get a little bit too fancy with my pin tool shapes, with my curves, instead of just being really direct with them, like that. So then I might use the smooth tool, which should have a shortcut, but it doesn't have one listed. And kind of round it out. All right. So I'm going to use the just the straight pencil tool now. They did have printers and so before printers they had what are called plotters but in 1990 they did have um, basic inkjet printers but they've had plotters since the 1940s so we're not doing citations you're just listing your your reference sites. Yeah, you would just list it that as the source, right? Absolutely. And you can say two pages from. That works great. So you can see the pencil tool made short work of that and really kept it pretty smooth. Okay, so now I've got that. Now all the leaves I'm also just going to do with the pencil tool. I'm just going to knock them out with confidence. Making sure that I close my paths. Then I'm just going to fill them as I go. So just like we figured out a workflow in animation, you want to figure out your workflow in Illustrator. To get the shapes you want and what's great about that pen or pencil tool is you can redraw and fill and then if you want to be a real professional <laughs> instead of drawing everything as soon as you can you start copying and then rotating what in Photoshop we called internal compositing, you do this way. But it's a little tricky with anchor points to get the shapes you want. But this will actually give you more consistency throughout. And this is using the large selection tool. And you can experiment with different proportions, different placements. I'm just copying and pasting. And then using the large selection tool, the black pointer, 
to transform, scale, and place. And I actually like that better than the variety I get from drawing each of them individually. But you don't want them to look too similar. Gonna save my work. And we're gonna get more practice in Illustrator doing shapes with clarity on our next assignment. We're going to do line art in Illustrator. So all of these leaves are very organic. So the pencil tool is great for that. I can just kind of do these free flowing curves with a lot of confidence. I have it set to smooth. I just want to make sure to round them out, like make sure they finish. And then I can always adjust them, move them, rotate them with the large selection tool. And copy and paste them. I can right click inside them, transform them and flip them. Copy and paste, rotate, scale, and we can knock this out. So even though I've got a lot of separate paths, I'm trying to make them all as rational and resolved as possible. Copy, paste, reflect, transform, reflect, and then rotate. Like that. And so I've turned my sketch off. That's what I have so far. Looks pretty good. I'm going to replace this one with one of these. So I'm just going to turn that one off for now. So I think I can do a better job with duplicate of this copy paste move it in just shrink it down and rotate it you can use your arrow keys as well All right next I have two symmetrical shapes and this these are really good examples for using the pen tool in that polygonal way just Plot and move, plot and move, plot and move. No curves at all. I'm not clicking and dragging at all. Plot and move, plot and move, plot and move. Just trying to get it done quick, but cleanly, rationally, in a way that makes sense. Okay, now, whoops, I didn't manage to close it though. Make sure you manage to close your path. There we go. Now I'm going to use the small selection tool and I'm going to round all those corners. Because that's the tail. Small selection tool, round all those corners. And how does that look? I'm going to make one change because I like the, the round here. So I'm going to add an anchor point with the plus sign. 
So I'm going to take that anchor point, angle it, and then I'm going to corner it and round it out. All right. Now, I just need to select those and flip them. I think I want these corners to be a little less severe. There we go. Maybe these to be just a little less severe. Okay, that works. Okay, now I'm going to select them both with the small selection tool holding down shift and command. But I'm not going to use Pathfinder. So now they're both selected. I'm going to copy and then I'm going to say edit paste in place and this will be both of them now and then I'm going to right click with the large selection tool transform and reflect but this time it's going to be reflecting vertically and then I'm going to hold down shift come on let's do that again reflect transform reflect vertically okay and then while they're both selected hold down shift I don't know why it's not working. Let's select them both again and move them and they'll stay on the axle and that's how I can match them symmetrically and then I want to distance them equally based on my guide. All right so I've made my first logo and now I've got to decide do I want the eye ball or not, the pupil in there or not. So I'm going to let you guys decide who is in this layer. Is it better with it? Come on. Oh, i got to unlock it. Or without it. Um, with, that, with it makes it look cuter, but without it makes it look more official. So it depends what you're looking for. Okay, hands for cute. Hands for official. Okay, there's more for cute. So we're going to leave it cute. All right. Remember, what's great about a vector is this will all be saved so I can always have both options. Okay, now how do I save this? Well, first, of course, I save it as my AI file. So I make sure I know where that is. It is this one. I'm going to mark it as green. That is now finished. I'll get rid of my other AI files. But I have to save it in some other ways as well. So I can move it into Photoshop. So I'm going to say file, save as a copy. And then I'm going to save it as an SVG file. S SVG is the most basic kind of vector format. It stands for scalable vector graphic. Say OK, all the defaults. But there's an even better format to transfer it between Adobe products, and that's called an EPS file. So I'm going to say File, Save as a Copy, and this is going to be as an Illustrator EPS. You cannot open an AI file in Photoshop, right? That's why you need it as either an SVG or an EPS. And then I can close Illustrator. I don't need it anymore. Okay, now... I have the EPS file. I'm going to mark that as yellow. And I have the SVG file. I'm going to mark that as purple. Okay? All of these are vector formats. Notice that the EPS is the only one that doesn't give me a preview image. Right? This is the trick. I am not going to do this. Click on the EPS. Right click. Open with Photoshop. That makes perfect sense, especially because it's an Adobe format. But when it does that, it's opening Photoshop, it's going to force you to rasterize your vector. And you don't want to rasterize your vector. Instead, you want your vector to be a smart object, right? Just like the vector tools. So here, it forces me to rasterize. So I'm going to say cancel. Never rasterize. If you, if you rasterize, it just turns it into pixels. You don't want pixels. So instead, you're going to open up Photoshop, and you're going to say File New. And you're going to create a print, printable size, which is our next thing. How do we make these things print ready? Remember, you're all required to print one logo. And this is how you're going to do it. You're going to open up a new file in Photoshop that is 8 inches wide. Why did it keep going?